following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour. The edition may be exciting, but the market is not. Uh, as always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Up one point in the S&P cash after being down five. I think we were down 17 or 18, uh, now up six on the NASDAQ. Uh, volume is just going through 2 billion shares as we speak. So volume just a tad better than yesterday, but most of that volume came early in the morning. Uh, just been drifting up on uh, no juice uh, from the first bottom. Uh, but other than that, uh, not a lot happening out here today. And why is that extremely telling? The reason is that today is the day that option market makers go delta neutral for the monthly options. That is when they try to move the market up and down so that they can add and subtract positions to nullify uh, any movement in the last seven days of trading, i.e. tomorrow through a week from Friday. Uh, they do that because if you put on a 90-day uh, option, most of the premium or almost all the premium is gone by this time. And it makes, uh, if you're going to have a big move in the market, it makes it uh, very tough on the option market maker. So what he decides to do is just go ahead and nullify the uh, other side of his position. So if he's uh, got a call on a stock, he'll short the other side of it, and then he's got it boxed in. And... Uh, you know, come the Monday after options expiration, he buys or sells whatever he had on the other side of it, and it's over. So there's always this kind of uh, back and forth in options. So what do we have today? We have little, if any, movement. We're up less than a point now on the S&P cash. Um, had a little push to the bottom. N very light volume. You know, I'm looking in the uh, the uh, net uh, the uh, NYSE consolidated tape, we probably should be having stuff like, you know, five, five and a half billion shares up here if we're going to break out the highs on any kind of volume. And I just continue not to see it at all. Uh, we just have this light and variable volume. Sometimes can markets slowly chew through higher prices? Uh, they can. But man, do we have a lot of stocks stretched on very high valuations. Doesn't mean that we can't go higher. Uh, but it means that if we're going to go higher, it probably is not going to last that long. But along with all the other stuff we're putting together, like options, uh, like uh, put uh, like uh, futures, this market is horrifically stretched to the upside. I spent some time diagramming that this morning in my daily newsletter. So to me, I'm not really afraid like last week. Uh, I said that maybe we had 10 points higher, and here we are, 10 points higher. Was never really afraid of the higher price, although it was kind of likely. Uh, to me, though, uh, starting yesterday, we started to see something vastly change, and that is that uh, a lot of people are just literally have zero idea that markets can go down, and that's the most dangerous market that you can ever trade. Uh, as always, uh, you can call me at 877-927-6648. But let's get this party started with a little bit of histoire. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1965, in a boardroom in Cove Street in New Bedford, Massachusetts, a young crew cut Warren Buffett takes control of a very decrepit tile textile maker, Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated, whose stock closes that day at $18 a share. Over the next 33 years, the stock price raises to $84,000 a share. And, of course, uh, he's become a big men, man of the street. Uh, he's kind of a neat punching bag because he commonly 
says one thing and does the other, from telling people to buy Coca-Cola when he was selling it. That was my first introduction to him. Thank God I didn't buy Coca-Cola. But I, I was thinking about it that day. Well, he's smart. He, he should know it. That was when I was really dumb. Uh, didn't do it because I think I got distracted. Maybe some shook some keys over there. Or maybe a, a bright object caught my attention for a second. But uh, about, I don't know, six, eight weeks later, I uh, started seeing the 10 Qs come out. I see that he was, at the same time, selling huge amounts of Coca-Cola. How could this be? Could uh, he be a spineless lying weasel? Well, the answer is yes. But again, if you're talking to somebody that wants to sell something, he's probably not going to tell you how horrible it is. This week, of course, he badmouthed IBM. Uh, now, the question is, did he badmouth IBM to get a lower price so he could buy more? He said he sold the third, but he didn't. wasn't badmouthing the stock up there at 180 when he was selling it. Uh, anyway, he's gone on to say the best way to uh, make a billion dollars is start with $2 billion and buy an airline. Since then, he's piled into airlines. He's said that, uh, what can you say? He said that uh, options were sewage. Uh, they were atomic weapons. They were going to blow up and destroy everybody. Uh, right now, Mr. Buffett in Omaha has the biggest option uh, business in the world. Um, so he's, uh, he's more than once. I probably, if I thought about it for a while, could probably come up with at least 10 times that I've caught him doing one thing and saying yet another. Uh, it's good for shareholders, but uh, I don't know. The whole kind of cult uh, following and the uh, ideology that uh, somehow he's going to help you get rich, I think other than buying his shares of a stock and ignoring what he says, uh, probably not a lot going on there. And he's got the very creepy uh, Mr. Munger who uh, yeah, over the weekend – uh, had the wisdom of saying that we spend too much uh, money on health care, that we should just let old people die. And, uh, he's about, he looks like he's 100 years old, and uh, if he was an animal, he'd be a turtle, too. He kind of got a real kind of turtle look to him. But uh, Mr. Munger, another guy who said that uh, options were sewage and proceeded to get knee-deep into the, probably waist-deep, into the option market also, uh, as his second in command. Just interesting about how many times they do one thing and say another. On this day in 1965, his career in deceit and lying starts. At least that's the way I look at it. Uh, other things going on in the market. Eh, just a quiet day on options expiration. And again, you know, probably the best thing to do is just go back and look at some of these charts and see how some of the earnings stocks actually move because uh, guess what there just isn't a lot else happening out here if you didn't have some fairly big news uh you're not really moving today acadia communications down uh from 49 dollars and 41 cents last night down to its previous low of 42.48 on may 3rd uh did so back then on two and a half million shares we got uh 3.8 million shares already it's held the low but not by much. We'll be back. We got a lot of stocks to look at. Give me a call 877 927 6648. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno-Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're back. Um, we were talking about Acadia Communications down fairly uh, decent volume. Of course, uh, it is holding its previous low today, but uh, it's not saying a lot. Uh, Array Biopharmacies, uh, Pharma, excuse me, Array, uh, went, broke through the previous resistance level of about eight and a half bucks, but came back and trading back inside of it. Not a lot of volume, not a big volume stock to begin with. Uh, Auto Home, a little higher out here, which is very uh, uh, interesting along with the uh, business that they're in. Uh, some decent volume, though, too. So when we look back here at a longer time frame, it is a breakout with some volume. Uh, not many of those going on today. Uh, bid Southerly, excuse me, Southerby. I've got to say it in my best Rhode Island. Southerby's um, coming back up uh, to its previous high on no volume. March 3rd, we had uh, 1.3 million shares at 49.87. Got to... Uh, yeah, we got to two cents of that today, uh, but only 460,000 shares so far. So a no volume attempt at a new high. Blue Buffalo, the uh, pet company, um, been kind of one of these weird uh, IPOs again. So many stocks with these uh, lower highs and lower lows. This one's certainly in this thing back to October 25th of 2016. Um, with uh, slightly uh, lower highs and higher lows. A nice big uh, down day today. Volume has picked up, not to anything uh, blowout-ish, but uh, you've got a nice gap that looks like it's going to get filled at 23.25. C-O-T-Y, Coty. Uh, back up to its huge gap down that had some decent juice. Back on the 9th of November, this thing came down on 25.8 million shares back into it with 16 so far today. So it is going to be light. $21 would be a target uh, for that. Uh, probably wouldn't short it, but uh, that's probably where it will find its leg up ending. Uh, Crocs. Uh, what a crock. 
I don't know if I would have named my company that. Uh, just uh, like some of the kids' names you don't want to have. Anyway, a croc of crocs. Uh, that'd be an alligator ate a bunch of these shoes. He, about the same volume, up to seven dollars and thirty-six cents. Um, always kind of a little creepy shoes. I never liked them. Uh, but a nice little bounce out here. I don't think they're ever going to get back to the way they were. Kind of a fad, and now just kind of an echo of what they were. Concordia Healthcare, this thing bouncing around uh, down at the lows. Uh, this thing looks like it's uh, circling the drain down. Uh, volume has picked up a little out here. 125 buck 25 I mean, literally a dollar and 25 cents is the previous low. Looks like that's where it's going to head and test. Disney, a lot of problems with ESPN. And I have to say that I don't watch how many sports games I've watched. In the last year, almost none. Almost all my spare time has been uh, looking at uh, something new that I've been working on and going to various classes and uh, trying to improve myself. Not sitting around watching ESPN, uh, but the times I've seen it uh, in restaurants on, um, even if I was a sports guy, I probably would go elsewhere to go see something. It seemed to be uh, some kind of mishmash of politics and sports, uh, not sports. I think a lot of people, when they watch sports, don't want their uh, politics in it. It's kind of Reese's peanut butter, probably pretty good peanut butter and chocolate. But uh, I don't think a lot of people want politics in their sports. Um, and what do you get? Yeah. You get a gap down today. This thing has kind of always looked like that $95 lane range was uh, a long-term pullback point in it. Uh, decent volume on the downside today. You've got that high volume pop. That's where support's going to be. Uh, everybody's cutting cords. Uh, of course, that hurts ESPN. I suspect long-term, not short-term, uh, their Star Wars franchise is going to peter out fairly quickly if the movies aren't any better than the last one. I thought it was incredibly average. And only if you live in your parents' basement do you think I do I think you went back and saw it one more than one time. Um, just uh, wasn't that great of a movie. I kind of like the thought of it. The application of it eh, seemed kind of uh, kind of weak. But anyway, uh, so you see that movie, some of these other ones out. Um, the problem with all these entertainment companies, especially ones that are now relying on huge new movies, is that they'll have a long dry streak. Even if they have a Gardens, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and a Star Wars, generally those things, they make one bad one, and then it's three bad ones, and then it's five bad ones. So the multiple on these tends to be a long, long uh time of feast and famine. And one of the reasons why I stay away from these companies, because it seems almost impossible to figure out what uh, is going to be uh, a hit and what is not going to be. Some movies you just know. But uh, like I said, kind of tough to see these new movies uh, pale in the uh, light of uh, great movies. You know, there's been a few, but very far and few between the most creative people seem to be going on to serials on uh, internet things like Amazon and and uh, Netflix. Uh, not many people actually going out there to make great movies these days, although there are a few, but a lot fewer than there used to be. Uh, Electronic Arts had a nice pop out here today. Uh, again, a company I looked at very hard coming this into earnings, and I couldn't figure out how much money these guys were making. It is all so opaque as to be uh, nutty. Got to 110.60. This thing was printing about 103 uh, after the bell last night. Didn't really change during the earnings call. Um, something happened overnight, and I'm not exactly sure what, but, man, they jacked this thing up in the beginning of the day, and it's done nothing but go higher. Uh, computer games are a big deal these days, and I guess they're just getting bigger. But there's so fewer games out there. But I always wonder when they spend the next three or four hundred million dollars kicking out a game and miss. The Fossil Group, we talked about this one yesterday. Nobody's buying watches. Everybody's got a phone. No one's buying iWatches either, by the way. Uh, down uh, some fairly decent volume. 
my guess is this thing's going to hover around at 10 bucks. Fuel, uh, we talked about this IPO for a while. It kind of came up. There was a little hope left. Uh, that hope is kind of dashed today with a huge volume move down to $3.08 on some decent volume. Uh, but uh, that would be it. Uh, we don't have really enough time for another one. When we come back, we're going to be talking marijuana. Yes, we are. So in that time, you can pick up the phone and call me at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. Or if there's something you want me to look at, uh, you can post it in the den. And uh, we'll be back here shortly. Anyway, up 43 cents on the S&P cash. My heart be still. Up five on the NASDAQ. Ooh. Wow. Ah. The bullishness of this market and the bearishness amazed me not. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And uh, Tom O'Brien points out that Boeing is down today, but not only that, but what did we see? What did I spy with my little eye? Well, the last high out here is March 2nd, 185.71, 5.5 million shares, and we got into it yesterday with a minimal 3 million shares, so uh, just 2.5 million shares short. No big deal on that. Uh, just one of many stocks out here testing its highs 
the light volume, the energy off this March 27th low was not all that much to write home about either. Got a little gap where it came down and found support at about 180. Uh, but uh, you got a fairly good clean top out here with light volume in that one. Uh, we were talking about marijuana stocks, the only illegal marijuana stock. Most of the other ones are some kind of fraud of some kind or another. Um, haven't really found one yet that that uh, I would recommend. I'm hearing something go by. Not exactly sure. Oh, okay. what's that supposed to be in the background? I don't know what they're playing. Uh, anyway, GW Pharmacies, uh, this one's down against the previous December 2nd low. They are the only company legally uh, able to make drugs from marijuana. Uh, a lot of work that they've been doing has been centered around making a uh, replacement for opiate drugs and their dependencies. Uh, anyway, uh, going against its previous low today and through it with about half the volume so far, so keep an eye on that. You've got your sign of strength, not much lower, about 105 and 103. That goes back to this huge uh, day on the 7th of September, 2016. Um, you know, this thing was down to like 35 bucks, had uh, some good news from the FDA on it. It rocketed up here. It kind of made a big high on lighter volume also. This one didn't quite top tick. But the October 7th high at 137.88 had 840,000 shares compared to the 136.95 on March 3rd with 588,000 shares. And like I said, uh, a lot of stocks out here have made these highs. Boeing, this one, some other ones have come up and double topped with very light volume and have been pulling back for a little while. Uh, Jazz Pharmaceuticals came out with earnings. Not a big deal, although it did sell off earlier in the morning. Uh, came back. It's just kind of flat on the day. Merrick Mac Pharmaceuticals opened a little lower, closing a little higher so far. MCHP, which is microchip technology, opened a high above its previous high. Looks like it may be in trouble of closing back into the trading range. Uh, needs a lot more volume. February 8th, we had almost 12 million shares, 76.50. We went through that up to 80.20 today. Uh, now we're getting back down to that 76.50 level. But uh, right now, it looks like you've got uh, less than half the volume with an hour and a half left to go. NCHL, the love boat, uh, hitting a little bit of chop out there on the uh, some today. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, what else? Not much out here, is it? Down a little. I don't think you can make anything about it. The big winner of the day is, of course, NVIDIA. This thing's been uh, bouncing off the 120 range for a while. It certainly has almost the volume of the first high. That was 57 million shares on December 28th. Uh, got into that on February 7th and gave it all back within a couple of days. Uh, just really kind of double topped out there. Come back. It's gotten back up here. I've been worried about this company long term, not short term. Um, I just Spent a couple of grand on their cards. I probably should have thought that this thing was going a little higher. Um, I don't know what else you can say about uh, NVIDIA other than this thing's at its highs, did pierce the highs, and may not hold the highs. I um, wonder if we're not looking back to that February 7th where this thing just kind of hit the highs in it. Uh, on stocks that uh, deserve the loser horn today, <laughs> is uh, Priceline. Uh, I was looking for this one to come down and come down on heavy volume. Uh, you have uh, now one gap, but there's several gaps in this thing down below. Um, I think this thing could come back to the $1,200 level uh, over time, not instantly. Uh, but this thing was set up extremely just like Amazon was last fall. And some of these other stocks that just literally, they kept pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and pushing them. Uh, regardless of the underlying fundamentals, then eventually uh, the music stops and someone gets uh, left holding the bag. And you don't want to be hold, uh, left holding the bag, do you? It's not the thing to do. Anyway, my guess is this thing's headed back down to around the 1650 level on this move, and it may take uh, the next 30 days to get there. 
but I could easily see this thing get back into that range. Silver Wheaton came out with earnings after the bell last night. Not much movement, uh, and of course, along with gold, the same thing. Um, Soda Stream, uh, been watching this thing and waiting to see what was going to happen. This did sell off. It has sold off with volume. It has recovered some of it, but got down to 49.38 earlier in the day. I still can't find anybody buying this stuff around here. I don't know if it's maybe a cultural thing in the parts of the country, uh, but it seems like they've they're doing something, but uh, maybe not enough. But uh, still don't see a lot going on with that one. Uh, SPWR, which is Sun Power, opened a little lower, is up a little higher, and it's just an engulfing of the last 20 days of trading in this one. Uh, volume's about the same, so again, can't look at much. Uh, trip uh, opened higher, has sold off throughout the day. Just got back up to its gap on February 16th that had 12.4 million shares. Uh, got into it with 7 million shares. And again, there just isn't a lot of juice, even on the biggest stocks and the most lauded, like uh, NVDA, to hold previous highs on most of what's going on out here. Uh, again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, uh, email me or PM me in the den. True Car, little doji out here. I'm waiting for one of these things to gap lower. This one may be it, although I'm not going to short a $18 stock, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, what you want is this thing to gap down to about $17.40 tomorrow morning and have a little abandoned baby out here. Uh, not exactly sure why that thing popped. The numbers didn't look all that exciting to me. Uh, Tereso, and almost no movement on it. TTNP uh, down a little bit more. B cell down a little bit more. EMC, Vulcan Materials Company. This one's kind of interesting uh, in the space that it's in. Uh, and I actually was long this one uh, and made a little money on it not too long ago. Uh, again, spike tire, didn't do much uh, earlier in the day, gave it all up. Uh, just got it back kind of into the candles from back around May 26, where you had a million shares. You had uh, almost, you're gonna have double that today. Uh, this thing at 137.96 that had 5 million shares is where you'd like that thing to hit on light volume if you were thinking of shorting it. Uh, Energy is not all that exciting on the upside. Vitamin Shop. Um, should have taken some more vitamins. Apparently, they lost their Flintstones. And Mr. Flintstone is uh, always liked the way he pedaled his car with its feet. I just thought that was interesting. But uh, nobody that owns Vitamin Shops probably thinks it's interesting 1280 another one to get the loser horn when we come back if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, just uh, looking during the break, we got Snap coming out after the bell tonight. Uh, certainly looks from third party sources as the subscribers. People actually use it, uh, especially in the uh, under 25 range. It is as big as Facebook. Uh, I don't know if it's bigger, older than that. People don't use it, but it seems to be huge. I don't know if they're making any money at it. That may be more of a Twitter-like deal, uh, but they are coming out after the bell. Uh, again, one of these things uh, that you just really want to watch, uh, it's got uh, three and a half uh, million shares short. Uh, in a 57 million share float, although I think a lot of those things are, yeah, that are not tradable. Um, only about 15% of those shares are tradable. So what would that be? That'd be uh, seven, eight million of which 3.5 million are short. Is that yeah, that's be the way it worked out. So uh, literally, you got a stock that's half of all the uh, tradable float is looks like it's short um so uh you know uh, if this thing had good earnings would i jump on the bad wa uh, bandwagon uh, for a little short squeeze eh, i don't know i think you'd have to have a very fast finger because i have a feeling this thing will move one way or the other and if they say something wrong uh you could go against you in a heartbeat the other way uh but uh eh, very tough to say but certainly one thing you don't want to be is short this one uh, it's all fun and games till someone loses an eye. Uh, what else do we have out here? Wendy's came out with uh, earnings. Why is, I, why is that not here? I'm going to have to add that if it's not. Really? Wendy's company, I know. Yeah, how did I do that? Where's my notepad? i got to find a notepad. W-E-N. Okay. i got to put that in my database. Anyway, the Wendy's company. Um, looks like a breakout. Looks like some volume. Um, not a bad-looking stock out here. And you got a valid breakout. So a move back to about, uh, what, uh, 1520, 1530 on light volume. Might be a bop buying opportunity on light uh, energy. Uh, Wolverine Worldwide. Another one of the stock. A uh, little pop back here, but just into uh, its uh, long, uh, this gap that's been around for a while. Let's see what's going on out here. Um, so this gap goes back to what? Down on September 19th, 2015, on 3.8 million shares, into it with uh, 2.4 million shares. Again, not a lot of these stocks really. Uh, you know, some of them have volume, but they've broken out and come back into the trading range. Some of them have no volume and pull back into the trading range. I just don't see a lot going on out here. And, of course, uh, we get to pull the loser horn out here twice today. Um, 
yes, it's uh, it's a uh, uh, what would you call it? Uh, that's uh, that's the sound of uh, Yelp owners when they woke up this morning if they weren't looking. Um, just a, a horrible, horrible earnings report. But again, this company, and it's the same thing uh, we've talked about forever, and that is when your business model has a critical flaw and you don't s really patch it for a couple of years, what do you do? And, you know, you, Twitter's kind of got the same issue. Um, you have to control what your users say. And if anybody knows anything about the Internet, people don't always aren't the nicest people. They're not Canadians on the Internet. They're not the nicest people in the world. They tend to be kind of the worst people in the world. And uh, what else can you say? Lie, cheat, steal. Uh, mostly put bad reviews on your competitors uh, uh, and say that you want your competitors and, and did bad things. Of course, a lot of court cases on this one. Uh, my guess is this has got uh, this big gap at about 23 bucks, and where this thing is probably going to head after it moves around. 41 million shares today. Uh, I don't think anything more than uh, the loser horn and some screams of sheer terror uh, will explain Yelp's price today. Why, 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 why? Uh, da, da, da. What else can you say? Um, open lower, trying to recover a little bit out here. If I'm not mistaken, this is uh, the Russian company, isn't it? The Russians. Uh, nope, this is Chinese. It was an internet company. Um, operates a live streaming platform in the People's Republic of China. It engages users to interact in live on, uh, online group activities through voice, text, and video. And, of course, none of it is monitored by the ChaiComs, as well to create and organize groups of various sizes approved by the ChaiComs and discover and participate in a range of online activities approved by the ChaiComs, including music shows, online games, and dating shows before you go to the Gulag. Um, huge volume out here today. You know, not a bad deal, but uh, man, I don't know what went on with this earlier in the day, but a nice recovery, volume's okay, but uh, always a little worried about what goes on behind uh, the Great Wall of China. Uh, what do we got? A couple minutes here, so we can probably start talking about stocks after the bell tonight. I think I actually had a list of them somewhere. Uh, I'll find them during the break. Uh, we talked about uh, Snap, and I think that's it. There's a few more tomorrow morning. Um, but uh, I don't think Snap's enough to move the market. And if we continue up a point and a half in the S&P cash and continue to have the kind of volume we've had the last two days, just uh, we're still under 2.5 billion shares with an hour left to go and again to really you know see some kind of volume sign of strength at the highs i'm probably looking at about five billion shares as we break through 2400 on the s p cash that we're out here and the entire index is not off 20 percent but off 40 percent um you know it's one of those things where you say things that can make you go hmm uh, some early discussions about Amazon. Uh, Target actually upped their price for shipping today to 35 bucks after um, Amazon moved it back lower yesterday. And, of course, it sold off a little bit on no volume out here. Probably one of the harder stocks to short. And I don't know if it's going higher, but it would probably be on one of my least favorite uh, lists out here. Let's take a look at the rest of the gang of four uh, Facebook uh, down a little bit. This thing kind of came off earnings and hasn't done much since. Lighter volume so far today. Again, it's all about the last 15 minutes. I spent most of the earlier part of the day watching uh, Microsoft's uh, developer conference uh, out in Spokane, Washington. Uh, this thing's up on kind of light volume. I was kind of... Uh, I was kind of thinking maybe they'd have something a little better to show for this year's developer conference, but uh, it was pretty lean. I have to say that they, 
or at least not showing new products. They're just kind of hawking what they've uh, done well, which is not bad. But uh, there's no big new thing coming out for developers that I saw at this point. We'll be back after this break. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we'll be back, uh, I guess, tomorrow after this segment. This is our last segment. That's what I was trying to say. Ham handedly. Uh, what do we got out here? Oh, we're up uh, $1.80 now. He stole my heart. It's, uh, up seven on the S&P cash. So what else do we have going on out here? Well, uh, just looking through some of these other ones to see if anything else is going on. Um, we're talking about Microsoft. Uh, I was looking to them. Um, uh, what else can you say? Uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, yeah, let's see if there's anything else out here. This certainly looks to me like 6650. This gap has kind of come back and get tested. You're up on light volume today. Uh, again, like I said, I didn't see anything that really uh, uh, moved my, and ran my boat. Have a uh, request to look at the IBB real quick. See if there's anything out here. And again, um, we've been talking about these longer term patterns uh, that are and tend to be lower highs and higher lows. 
uh, and narrowing trading ranges, which is probably not a surprise figuring that the uh, needle on the S&P 500 has been stuck for a week or so. Um, eh, what else you got out here? Yeah, I think that's kind of it. We'll look at a few of the stocks that I had for tests last night. Um, there were a few out there. We were talking about some of the ETFs uh, looking rather interesting. And, you know, you're basically going sideways down on the bottom of uh, the SPXU, which is the pro shares. Um, again, not a lot of volume out here today. Opened a little higher, kind of moved a little lower. XPO Logistics. This one was watching it here on a little shorter time frame uh, and wanted to see how this thing reacted today. He had 5 million shares on February 22nd at 54.70. Got into that with 3 million shares today. So, again, just not a lot of juice, a lot of pushback up here. This one, I wouldn't short, uh, but uh, looks like it's kind of run out of juice at the high end. Hack is a ETF you may not have heard of, but this is a computer software uh, ETF. And this one had 750,000 shares back on February 22nd, 2989. We broke that today. Uh, about 500,000 shares a couple of days ago as it kind of went up into it. The last three days, of, uh, two days have been 300,000 shares yesterday. And as it's broken the previous high, just 167,000 shares today. So we got a lot of stocks out here. What I really dislike uh, kind of about the sector right now, the computer security thing. And I think CyberArk reports tomorrow night, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is that you had a lot of juice from the 20, uh, February 22nd high back down to the March 9th low. But when you look at the April 18th low to this high, there hasn't been much juice. Now, you had one good day out here on the 5th uh, that you had kind of a sign of strength. But as you got up to the highs, um, kind of a wilt, wilting buyers, as soon as they see uh, a recent high, they tend to run and go elsewhere. Uh, Avago, of course, the uh, company uh, breaking out today on no volume. This is the um, older, uh, isn't it, RF Micro and all the other guys uh, that used to be uh, part of the uh, cell phone uh, chip business. Uh, you needed 7 million shares. You got uh, 1.8 million shares today. So, uh, you know, you got a lot, of, a lot of stocks out here that could whip down lower as they have broken the highs on lighter volume or just pulled back into the trading range. Not a lot looking that great and bullish. A few stocks, not the many. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.